We are proud to welcome back another one of our returning members of the Hawkeye News team. Hawkeye News sports anchor Ryan Gard joins us in the Sports Center. What's happening in sports this month, Ryan? Thanks, Lexi and Chris, and hello, Hawks and Lady Hawks sports fans. You're now entering the Athletic Zone. It's great to be back for my senior year in a brand new Sports Center. There's lots of sports news, so let's get started. <laughs> What a great home crowd, the Red Oak Hawks. He's going to get hit hard, but you know, he just doesn't stop, and he breaks free and breaks into the open. He's the midfield. Running outside, and the pitch is good. He's to the 25 and gets tackled. And here's the handoff going left, cutting back right. First down in Morris. He crosses the 40, the 35, to the 34-yard line. Grab him, he breaks the tackle, breaks another, still fighting it. He's going to get the first down to the 35 and goes to the 31-yard line. He exploded through the middle of that defense. Starting off the school year, Hawks fans from across the district headed to Goodloe Stadium for Meet the Hawks Night, a community pep rally introducing players from all high school athletic teams. Red Oak football, volleyball, cross country, tennis, and golf teams were just a few teams announced that night. Fans also gathered at Brookshire's in late August to cheer on the volleyball season and the football team for their fight against the Highland Park Scots in the Tom Landry Classic. Now it's time for Hawks football action. The Hawks got off to a rough start, but now the season is building momentum. The Hawks at press time have won the first District 15-4A game against Lancaster. To kick things off, the Hawks had a rematch with the Highland Park Scots in the annual Tom Landry Classic at SMU Stadium. This is the Hawks' second matchup in the Tom Landry Classic. Ishmael Harrison, who caught six passes for 140 yards, led Red Oak. The Hawks lost 7-30. The Hawks then traveled to Lake Dallas to compete against the Falcons. The game stayed neck and neck throughout the night. Lake Dallas won the turnover battle and had three interceptions, including a fourth quarter pick on the first play following a Red Oak interception. The Hawks lost the second game of the season, 32-34, Lake Dallas. Hawks then battled Waco University Trojans in Waco. The rain didn't stop the Hawks as they braved the elements to come out with a win in the final seconds of the game. After a touchdown and extra point for the University Trojans, Mandel Dixon scored from the one-yard line with 44 seconds left to give Red Oak its first win this season. That game ending, 22-17, Hawks. Next, it was homecoming night for the Hawks in a rematch against White House. Red Oak's Jeremiah Gaines returned an interception 90 yards for a touchdown with six seconds left in the first half. Travis Wallace threw a touchdown pass and added two rushing touchdowns. And the defense for Red Oak recovered three fumbles. In Hawks vs. Lancaster game, the Hawks beat the Tigers for a District 15-4A victory. Red Oak was led by quarterback Travis Wallace, who threw for 150 yards and a touchdown, and running back Jeremy Lewis ran for 95 yards and a touchdown. Final score, Red Oak 21, Lancaster 16. The Hawks then faced West Mesquite at home. West Mesquite rallied from a scoreless first half in an injury scare to tie the game twice. An interception by Red Oak nose guard Dundee Walker on a middle screen inside Red Oak's 10 and a partially blocked field goal prevented West Mesquite from getting on the scoreboard in the first half. After West Mesquite tied the game at 14 with 3.02 remaining, Red Oak embarked on a 10-play, 61-yard drive to set up the winning kick. Justin Mendoza kicked a 37-yard field goal with three seconds remaining to give Red Oak a 17-14 win over West Mesquite in a District 15 4 a game at Billy Goodloe Stadium. Again, the final score, Red Oak 17, West Mesquite 14. 